Hey guys, Money Man 300 and back to finish out the series of tuning in depth and the last spot in the, at least in the tuning area, um, may consider going back and talking about builds in a little bit more depth. For now, uh, finish up the, the tuning in depth and the last spot I had was the differential tuning. So um, let's get in there a little bit. I'm using, uh, this car is one of the demonstration cars. Uh, we'll have some demonstrations with this one. We'll see how they go, um, but I've got uh, this Austin Martin, because it's a super high torque rear wheel drive, I'll also be using uh, probably a, a Mitsubishi Evo um, to demonstrate the all wheel drive differential tuning. I don't know that I'll pull up anything front wheel drive. Really, the, the concepts from a, a rear wheel uh, apply uh, the same to front wheel also, but I, I really don't tune much front wheel drive. Um, so I don't have a ton of expertise there, but the concepts are the same. So uh, first of all, let's go in there and let's take, take a quick look. Um, this is one that I have set up already. Um, and what I'm going to do is, is, is do some different things. I mean, you can read through here on what it does, um, but essentially, um, and I really wish they, they didn't call this high and low, but whatever. Um, essentially, differential is your last stop shop between the engine and the wheels to control torque. Um, down to the wheels and it does that to be able to it's a form of it's really a form of traction control you can think of it that way and it does it does that to, to keep the wheels from slipping I mean you heard the term I'm sure you've all heard the term a limited limited slip differential and that that what that does is control the 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 rate of torque um, to the to to each tire individually so um, one could have more than the other and the reason you do that and the reason you need to, to do that is because it's mainly for turning. So when you're turning, your wheels, your tires and wheels rotate at a different rate inside to outside. And, and so they need to have different torque applied to them to maintain traction and actually be able to turn. Um, if they, you know, what they call an open differential or if you had no differential and, and, and everything just rotated at the speed of the axle, um, the car would be really hard to turn because as you went around, you would have... Uh, you would get a lot of wheel spin on your inside wheels as your weight shifts and wheels can even lift up off the ground you're spinning and you're wasting torque out there and it's not being applied to the wheel that you need to get the car around so think of a limited slip differential as you're going around a corner say you're going around a left you know a hard left and the, the weight transfers to that right side you want to put torque to those right side wheels and that's what a uh, that's what a differential does um, is, is adjust the torque from wheel to wheel. Now there's two different types. There's your power, your acceleration differential, and there's your coasting or deceleration differential. Um, they're used for two different purposes. One really is entering the turn, coming off the gas and entering the turn. That's your deceleration dif differential, the rate at which your differential locks, how quickly it locks um, versus stays open. Uh, open differential, you hear that term, that means that everything's rotating at the same speed. Differential is, is not, is applying the exact same amount of torque to both wheels. Uh, lock differential means it's, 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 it's actually, you know, fully sending different torque to each wheel. Uh, it's about the best way that I can do it. I, th I, I didn't really even read the description here. I'm assuming this description kind of explains that a little bit. Um, but that, I mean, that's what it does. Uh, differential allows the tires on each side of the car to turn to different rates. Yes. Since the inside travels a shorter distance. Correct. Limited slip. Uh, differential locks at a preset point. So it just depends on wind, providing maximum traction. Excel differential adjusts how much differential wheel turn required to lock under acceleration, obviously. And then you have the decel. So for high powered vehicles, the increase is necessary. Now, this is where I d disagree, right? Uh, on rear differentials, increasing Excel can increase oversteer. That's true. For high-powered vehicles, this increase is necessary to maintain adequate grip. I No. You actually want to go lower there, but I'll, I'll cover that, and I'll, I'll actually show you in the demonstration why that is. So, um, so the, the defaults on this are 75-75. What I'm going to do is show you what I have here, and you can see I have a very low... Um, differential setting and in terms of the game that percentage and that low differential setting essentially means it's going to uh i try to think of the best way to put that i mean it, it's basically a traction control i'm not going to get as much torque overall to the wheels when i hit acceleration so i'm going to show that here i'm going to go out here and i'm just gonna better get ready here because this car is a beast uh setup has changed i didn't think i changed it so here's what we'll do here 
I'm gonna use this track here so we'll get this thing slowed down coming out of here now this is where it kicks in right in here so I'm able to uh, it is no traction control and I was able to hammer it pretty good coming out of that so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna whip it around and go back real quick and then we'll do that demonstration again with some other settings on the reverse Laguna Seca here Flip around here. There we go. Okay, so, so we got that going. And I'm going to come over here, and for now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to concentrate on this. So, um, pretty good control, and I had to really lower this. Like I said, this is a super high torque car. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and I'm gonna, we're going to run it wide open. Um, so, this, this is going to make the car super skittish and probably uncontrollable coming out of that corner, but we'll, we'll take a look here. Um, do that, and then we'll hit it. Oh geez, already. <laughs> and I'll do that coming back too. I didn't. I did not apply any more. And I drove about. You can see, I was on my fourth lap. I drove a few laps on the track just to make sure I had a good feel for what how the car was set up before I mess with it. Um, also, probably I let make sure that. Holy cow! Got to start this thing in second gear. Make sure tires are. Just barely any gas applied on there. Now, if I'm going straight like this, it's pretty good, and I'm in third gear. Get it turned around again. I want to make one more run at this. Just a lot, right? There. I mean, you can see I was barely putting any throttle on at all. So, so that's that setting there. Let's run this all the way back and let's uh, let's change it and let's do zero on that acceleration differential. Oh, wrong one. So the default, by the way, is 75 on every car. 75, 75. And never once have I actually left that there. So one of these that you just tune on every car. Um, the higher the torque and horsepower, the lower I'll set the the uh, acceleration differential. So let's put it on zero just to show. And hopefully this it, it's sometimes it, you know, it's hard without feeling yourself, but uh, that's why you got to go out and test these extremes. And what you can do is if it's too low, you can also create a bit of an understeer. I don't know if I can tell that much difference there, but I got to get I got to get out here and drive it like I'm driving it on the track here. In a car like this, I might not be able to. I could probably run it at zero. I don't know if that was any better or not. We'll drive a couple turns here just to... I mean, this car it torques in third, fourth gear, like every gear. It does affect my turning. It's a little harder to turn. Not necessary to run that corner in third gear, or in second gear. So there's, there's kind of the difference. It's hard to show the difference. I can definitely feel the difference. I'm able to apply a ton more throttle, uh, but I also feel like it's slow coming out of the turn. So there's a there's a happy medium in there. You want to run, so basically the rule of thumb is on, on the rear, you want to run it as high as you can and still be able to control the car coming out of the turn. This is for your corner exit. This is how quickly you can get back to full throttle and how quickly you can get on it. it it's a really feel type setting. It depends on how much you like to jam on the gas coming out of there, how good you are with your throttle control finger. So um, this is an extreme low. I would say typically on, on cars like this, I'm in the 25% range um, on that as opposed to eight. But like I said, this is a car that's got like 590 foot pounds of torque and you know 500 horsepower. So it, it's crazy. It, it, the car wheel spins like a beast um, and I don't have traction control on so probably fix that by putting traction control on but I tune always without and then if I still need it after the fact um, I do that so um, let's talk a little bit about deceleration differential this you want to run um, you, you want to run this as high as you can without being in uh, without instability into the turn the higher you run it the better your 
essentially the better your braking is going to be because it's actually going to decelerate for you as you come off of the gas. So you want to be able to run this as high as you can and you'll see a lot of them and, and it's very track dependent, very feel. There's some tracks when you don't want to lose speed coming off the throttle. Um, sometimes like Prague and Alps and some of those you want to run even lower. It, but it just depends. You may want, you may like it higher and use the brakes less. You may want to use the brakes more and don't use the differential differential to, to control your speed. So um, again, differential tuning is probably the one the one thing that's that's more feel than anything else. But I'm trying to give you some general rules of thumb to use on the acceleration and deceleration. So like deceleration, let's see what it, it looks like here. Let me think. Uh, there's a good spot. Uh, a little bit further in the track, uh, there's that left-hand turn. It's going to help you. It's going to be. You're going to notice it more on a coming off of a little higher speed. So, what I'm going to do is go ahead and, and and run it wide open on this, and see if it makes it. See if it makes it unstable here. This would be the turn. Actually, it wasn't bad. I can see if you get the feel for it coming off. Run this turn here, down here. Okay. They don't have to use the brake much at all. Ooh, it really turns in there. I could probably run like this. I mean, this car is so, I don't know if this is a great car for demonstration. It's so crazy. It's an uh, Austin Martin. Whoa! Quick, hit the brakes. <laughs> uh, I was looking at the looking at the car as you saw there. but So there's, there's that on it. So you can, and I'm going to do this here. Yeah, get this thing going straight. There we go. So it's going to decelerate pretty good. You can see it coming down quite a bit just by coming off the gas. So what we'll do here is go uh, just show you what that is like. That can also help you on your uh, to turn in a little bit better as well. Higher deceleration differential. Um, and we're going to run this uh, all the way at zero. Fully locked, as as uh, as they would call it. I'm gonna have to go run this straightaway again because that was. I could really tell. <sighs> Definitely not coming off as fast. See how it acts coming into turns here real quick. And then we'll, what we'll do is once I'm done with this little piece here. And I typically run around anywhere from like 8 to 30. This is about as high as I run on this one. That's not bad there. Again, I, I don't notice the deceleration differential near as much as I do the acceleration. So it's going to be feel. Try try the settings out. I run usually anywhere from 8 to 50. Uh, I think I said 30, but probably more like 50 on that. This one's at 30 right there, uh, right in the middle of all of that. So that's that's how I do, uh, you know, rear-wheel drive. It'd be basically the same for front-wheel drive, although you may want more deceleration uh, or in there than, than in a, in a rear-wheel. I'm going to put this back uh, so I don't mess it up. I'll do that. And then I'm going to go grab the... Uh, We'll go grab the four-wheel drive car, and that, I think we can show some things um, that make a little bit more difference. So I'll go grab that, and we'll, uh, we'll show you the demonstration on uh, four-wheel drive differential. Okay, so now let's take a look at the all-wheel drive differential tuning, which I think is even more important than the uh, front and rear-wheel drive. They're important, but they're so based on feel and how you drive that everybody may have different differential tuning, and you'll have one person tell you, oh, you know, this needs to be higher, this needs to be lower, but it's so dependent on feel um, that that's a little bit difficult to even do and show. Now, in this one, this is a default tune. I reset this to default. Um, this is the out-of-the-box, 50, 75, you know, 50 and zero on, on your uh, deceleration acceleration there um, 75 75 and then your balance at 50 50 balance so I'm gonna show you what that's like out of the box here as I drive this Come in through. Ooh, one thing I know is that the brakes are hard one thing, it's hard to turn and it likes to push out of a turn like that and it's just understeers 
I know anybody that's driven, you know, all-wheel drive car in this game knows that feeling, right? This thing's just... Just push. So I'm going to drive the whole... I'm going to go ahead and drive this whole lap. Just to get a lap time, although I kind of screwed up the first turn a little bit, but... Get... I just can't get the thing to turn. So we'll do this here. And then what I'll do is after I drive this one lap, uh, come through the starting line, we will... I'll make... Make some quick adjustments here. I'm trying to drive as well as I can. It's just kind of hard to turn a little bit. Yeah, even there, the course. It's a little tough. And this is a B class uh, Evo 8, I believe, Evo 6. You guys will hit on the comments. I'll look at it again. Uh, it's an Evo 6. It's got that rally engine, so you notice those low shift points. And I know the shifting sometimes drives people crazy on this thing, but. Okay, so there you go. What was that lap I just had there? It wasn't very good. Uh, so it makes a big difference. Um, so we'll tune that. Um, and I was running, you know, in the 135s with my normal setup, uh, fully tuned, and then I reset it to default to do that. So there's some other things that are going to make this uh, a little quicker other than differential. So first thing we're going to do is if you do nothing else, you want to put more to the back. So 75 to 80%. I want to make it more like a rear wheel drive. What that's going to do is get more power to the back. It's going to create some oversteer, thus eliminating some of your understeer. So that's one thing that I normally do. The other thing I normally do is bump up uh, my front acceleration number. Uh, no, uh, yeah, I don't even remember what I had on here. I'm gonna actually, if you do nothing else but this, it's probably gonna be real good. So um, I do like the front acceleration number to get extra grip on the front uh, coming out of the turn. So I'm gonna bump this up to, let's go 65. I'm just gonna make these two changes. Just basically apply more torque uh, out there. Oh yeah, ooh, turn in. Still wasn't very good, but, and I know, whoa. Got a little almost snap steer there. Definitely, so just that all by itself. I don't know if it's gonna make a difference in lap time. Concentrate up here just a little bit and drive, but still have some understeering here. But that is probably my roll bars since I'm default tuned right now. That's not bad. I don't know that this time's going to be any better than what I had before. Definitely better through there. We'll come out of here. Should be about a second faster. I was like a little over three seconds out of the time. I mean, there's still a lot of tuning I'd have to do to put my default back on here. But this is real close to where my default is going to be on the all-wheel drive. So nothing else. You know, I didn't make any other adjustments to the rest of the tune. I shaved a second off. Probably, you know, the better drive is probably more like a second and a half just by changing those things. And you can continue to play in there. I usually also take this down um, and sometimes all the way out. But, you know, maybe take it down to there uh, on that rear as well so that I'm not using so much of that and just using more of my brakes. This is a pretty typical, this right here is probably a pretty typical setting uh, on an all-wheel drive car. It may go as, as high as 80, um, but it's big on that. So that's, that's really going to wrap it up. I think the bottom line here is, is it's really all about feel. You can go out on the internet and read tons about differential and, and get into way in depth on it. But from a, a strictly video game perspective, in a rear-wheel drive car, 
Um, if you're having trouble controlling the back end coming out of a turn, one of the adjustments you can make is to reduce your, uh, reduce your rear acceleration differential. If you are unstable going into the turn, you I mean you let up off the gas and the car gets a little squirrely, doesn't, doesn't hook up right, uh, you can also then decrease your rear de deceleration. So those are tunes, those are just, those are the basics on this at all. You wanna run them as, as high as you can and remain stable, but it's one of the things that, you know, when I hear people say, I am really having problems controlling the car coming out of a turn, it's one of the first places it'll look is, okay, what's your front acceleration number? Because if it's, if it's, or not your front, your rear acceleration number, assuming it's rear wheel drive, if it's like 70, and you know, the first thing I'll say is, well, bump that down to like 30 and try it again. I think you really notice a difference in there. Um, certainly other things contribute like your springs and your, and your roll bars, springs especially coming out of a turn. Um, but this is certainly a place, uh, generally speaking, I'm going to run it, you know, lower than what the default values are. Um, you know, starting around 50 maybe on, on those real world drive cars, 50 and 30 or something like that, and then adjust from there. So uh, that's going to wrap it up for the differential tuning. If there's anything I didn't cover in there, go ahead and uh, leave your questions uh, in the comments. I know a couple of those parts might have been a little confusing. It's kind of hard to, to explain exactly how that works. But um, yeah, that's it in there. Uh, again, front wheel drive is going to work pretty much the same, same kind of adjustments. And rear wheel drive, you have a couple of... Uh, you know, other adjustments in the or not real all wheel drive, you'll have uh, some other adjustments you have to make, like your your center differential, and that's your power to your front and rear. And you really want to put more to the rear, that's that's going to eliminate or help to eliminate that uh, that understeer that you get with all the drive cars. So, yep, that's going to wrap it up. That is the last uh, in the line. Um, if there are any questions, please leave them in the comments. Otherwise, I'll end it with that. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.